Let's start with a wired connection, the Ethernet connection. This is the basic form of networking that we use today and have been using literally for decades. The Ethernet connection is going to give us for each computer on the network a unique address called an IP address and it consists of four numbers. Now these numbers are unique within a certain area. For example, an IP address that starts with 10 or with 192 is reserved for a subnet. It's usually like a local area network and that entire subnet then somehow connects in many cases to a larger network or to the internet itself using an IP address for its router for the hub of that network and that IP address for that router must be unique within the world of the larger network and so on and so on and so on so that every IP address is unique within its own subnet and the subnet somehow accesses a larger internet a larger network through a device which has its own unique IP address within the domain of the larger network until you get all the way up to the internet. So what we need is an IP address for every computer that's connected to a network using these protocols and in general on our local area networks they start with 10 or 192. If your organization has its own domain like apple.com then there will be an IP address for that network and addresses can be distributed within it. This is basic networking and the bottom line to this is that you almost never need to worry about this with one exception. The protocol that we use to assign IP addresses normally today for most people is DHCP and what happens is with DHCP I communicate with my router the computer communicates with the router because I have better things to do and says I need an IP address and the router says okay here's an address that is not being used you can have it for a period of time typically 24 hours at the end of 24 hours the computer has to renew what's called the lease for that address and he gets that address or another address now let's move up for a typical configuration which is let's say a cable modem which is always on and it can typically always on, and it communicates with the internet service provider. The cable modem uses DHCP and it needs an IP address that is unique within the network of the internet service provider. Usually once every 24 hours the cable modem says to the internet service provider I need an IP address and it gets an IP address for 24 hours. So each cable modem on the internet service providers network has a unique address and the leases are constantly being renewed and they may have new addresses and that is why you are told usually that your internet address for your cable modem may change because it's renewed every 24 hours. One of the characteristics of this is that if you are running a web server people need to be able to connect to a known address and they can't do so if it's always changing. So internet service providers give you the opportunity in many cases to have what's called a static IP address. So you can know what the address of your cable modem is going to be. Within the network that we're running here that runs below our cable modem, we have several computers sharing the cable modem through in this case an airport base station instead of renewing a lease for an IP address every 24 hours I can manually assign IP addresses to each computer so as long as they are valid IP addresses I can go around and use this option to put a manual IP address in a computer what that means is there's no lease renewal and because there is no lease renewal I know that the computer on this person's desk will always have this IP address. So instead of connecting to it with a name, the name for the computer is not going to change within our network unless someone changes the name on their computer. I can connect to a known IP address and know which computer I'm going to. In general, what we're doing with most of the home, small office, and school networks that most of us deal with, we use DHCP, we connect to computers by name using the names that we set up in Mac OS X so we can have IP addresses that are constantly changing. 
But if you have a need for a static IP address, here is where you set it. And if you need it, it often is the case that you will be given this by the system administrator who is setting up an environment where the IP addresses need to be known. So if you are connected, you have an IP address that is given normally through DHCP and you can see that the one that I have at the moment is 10.0.1.197 through the router which is at 10.0.1.1 which happens to be an airport base station I'm connected to it by cable using our built-in internet but I'm also connected to it wirelessly and for that I have the IP address 10.0.1.200 which was assigned by the router and if I look in the TCP IP section of the settings for airport you can see here I've got the routers address which is the same as the routers address for built-in internet because it is in fact the same device they could be two different devices both of which might hang off a cable modem but all that I care about is that within this local area network here we are all sharing addresses in the range of 10.0.1 point something and those addresses at the moment are being assigned by the airport base station they need not be they could be assigned by the hub above the airport base station if there were several layers to this network and the airport base station would just pass through the IP addresses that were assigned at the next higher level as long as they are unique within the part of the network that we're functioning in, it doesn't matter. And for most of us, DHCP coming off a cable modem or across a wireless base station or a wired base station is the setting that we want. And if we want something else, we are given the settings. If we need to totally manually configure something, here is where we can put in those settings. And if you need this information, whoever is configuring your network or your internet service provider will give you all of this information. This is not Mac OS X. This is not Apple. This is a standard protocol, and internet service providers or network administrators can give you this regardless of what operating system you are using.